as the years pass and turn into decades, the human colony continued to grow and expand, establishing new colonies on the other continents on the planet's sanctuary. The Black Star Initiative is now led by Director Sanchez, which became a major driving force behind the expansion and development of the colony, overseeing the construction of new ships, new settlements, and infrastructure. However, the threat of the Prethren Swarm remained ever-present in the minds of the colonists, and the possibility of the Gateway Megastructure activating at any moment was always looming in the back of their minds. To protect the colony, the human Council established a military force known as the Interstellar Defense Fleet, tasked with defending the colony against any potential threats. Led by Admiral Yasmin Herbert, the IDF became a key part of the colony's defense, patrolling the borders of human space and responding to any potential threats. As the colony continued to grow and prosper, tensions between different factions within the human society began to rise. The Fellowship, now led by the charismatic and dangerous Marshal Appleby, continued to carry out terrorist attacks against the colony, causing unrest and fear among the population. The Human Council struggled to maintain order and stability, knowing that any major upheaval could put the entire colony at risk. On September 12, 2201, Marshal Appleby met his end by patrolling IDF forces near the gas giant planet St. Pomeroy. The death of the cultist leader Marshall Appleby did not spell the doom to the Fellowship cult, and die-hard members of the said cult still continue to clash with IDF forces in years to come. On May 19, 2200, the alien gateway megastructure activated for a brief period, allowing an unknown organism to pass through. As the interstellar defense fleet, led by the skilled and experienced Admiral Yasmin Herbert, approached the alien gateway megastructure, they were on high alert. The gateway had been inactive for decades, and its sudden activation was a cause of concern. As the fleet approached, they saw a bright light shining through the gateway, and then a strange creature emerged. It was like unlike anything they had ever seen before, with the body shaped like a giant squid and tentacles that writhed and twisted in the air. Admiral Herbert immediately ordered her fleet to fire upon the creature but it was able to evade their attacks with incredible speed and agility. The battle was intense and chaotic, but the fleet managed to finally corner the creature and neutralize it. As the dust settled, the crew of the fleet were in shock. They had never encountered an organism like this before, and they had no idea what it was or where it came from. The reason for the gateway's activation also remained a mystery, and the fleet was on high alert for any further threats. Admiral Herbert and her team quickly began to study the creature and the data they had collected in the battle. They were able to confirm that it wasn't a preference scout, but rather an unknown organism. The data was sent back to the UNS government for further analysis, but many questions remain unanswered. The incident raised concerns about the safety and security of the colony and its people, and the government was under pressure to find out what had happened and how to prevent it from happening again. In January 2nd, 2205, an orbital space habitat was discovered in the Yolta star system. The Council of Humanity sent a diplomat and an envoy to establish communications with the unknown aliens. After several months of observations, it was determined that the aliens posed no threat to humanity. Formal communications was established once the human linguists were able to decipher the language. The aliens, known as the Shroud Enclave, appeared to be a religious cult. As the human envoy made contact with the Shroud Enclave, they were greeted with a mix of curiosity and caution. The alien leader, a being known as the High Priestess, welcomed the humans with open arms, but made it clear that the Enclave was not interested in joining any larger political or economic organizations. They preferred to remain isolated, focusing on their own spiritual pursuits. Despite this, the humans in the Shroud Enclave were able to establish a productive relationship, with the Enclave providing valuable resources and knowledge in exchange for certain technological advancements. The humans were fascinated by the Enclave's advanced understanding of space-based agriculture and their unique spiritual practices. As the years passed, the human colony continued to thrive, thanks in part to the assistance of the Shroud Enclave. 
However, tensions began to rise when the enclave began to express concern over the U.S. expansion into nearby star systems. They believed that such expansion would disturb the balance of the universe and bring harm to all life. The U.N. Council tried to assure the enclave that they had no intention of causing harm, but the enclave remained skeptical. Despite the misunderstanding, the diplomatic relations of both parties remained friendly. As humanity continued to explore the vast reaches of space, they were constantly amazed by the wonders they discovered. From ancient artifacts left behind by long-dead civilizations to habitable planets ripe for colonization, the Black Star Initiative was dedicated to uncovering the mysteries of this galaxy. But as they made contact with more and more alien species, they quickly realized that they were not alone in this galaxy. Some of these aliens, like the long-extinct First League, were ancient federations that had been around for eons before being wiped out by some unknown cause. Others, like the Uri Remnant, were technologically advanced civilizations that had been spacefaring for thousands of years. The Uri Remnant, in particular, were a strange and enigmatic alien species. Their advanced technology and long history in space exploration had left them with a deep understanding of the cosmos and its mysteries. They were a highly technologically advanced civilization with advanced spacefaring capabilities and access to technologies that were far beyond what humanity had ever achieved. Despite this, they seemed to have little interest in interacting with other species, preferring to remain in isolation in their own space. The Black Star Initiative, now led by Director Yelena Makarov, was determined to learn more about the Uri Remnant and their advanced technology. They sent out a team of scientists and diplomats to establish formal diplomatic relations with the Uri Remnant and learn as much as they could about this mysterious alien civilization. The diplomatic mission was met with resistance. As the Uri Remnant were very wary of outsiders and preferred to keep to themselves, and warned of any attempt of human vessels reaching Uri space will not be expected to return. On June 25, 2218, after years of attempting to translate the language of an unknown alien civilization, human linguists finally made a breakthrough and were able to communicate with the Mithfell Enlightened Kingdom. The Mithfell are a species of avian appearance, and unfortunately, the diplomatic talks between them and humanity were not successful due to cultural differences. The Mithfell diplomats, and in general, the Mithfell species, showed immediate hostility towards humanity. In response, the humanity closed its southern borders in anticipation of a potential armed conflict and began to seize as much territory as possible. The Mithfell Enlightened Kingdom responded as well in grabbing any nearby territory and establishing stellar bases near the human border, making sure that humanity will not further expand its territory. Troubling reports of this space kidnapping incidents became troublesome that heightened tensions soon followed. Each passing day, diplomatic relations between the Mithfell and humanity became worse. As tensions continued to rise between humanity and the Mithfell, the Human Council knew that they had to find a way to de-escalate the situation before it boiled over into an all-out war. They sent a new envoy to the Mithfell, hoping that a fresh perspective and a renewed effort at diplomacy would help ease tensions. The envoy arrived at the Mithfell capital, a bustling metropolis filled with towering spires and ornate buildings. The Mithfell received the envoy with open arms, and the two sides began a series of negotiations that lasted for weeks. As the talks dragged on, the Human Council waited anxiously for news of any progress. Finally, after much back and forth, the two sides reached an agreement that would see the Mithfell withdraw their military assets from the border and allow humanity to continue its expansion. The agreement was met with relief from both sides, and it seemed that the threat of war had been averted. The Human Council knew that it would take time for the Mithfell and humanity to build trust and friendship, but they were hopeful that this was the beginning of a new era of peace and cooperation between their two civilizations. On August 25, 2219, on the 68th anniversary of humanity's exodus through the portal gateway, the Council of Humanity voted unanimously to reform the Black Star Initiative, originally a colonization program of the United Nations, into a recognized state. In honor of their origins on Old Earth, the BSI was renamed United Nations of Seoul. 
after a relative peace and de-escalation of UNS southern borders, on August 2, 2223, Midfell and Lighting Kingdom suddenly declared war on the United Nations from Seoul, demanding the surrender of UNS forces and the seizure of Horchim star system to the kingdom. When news reached to the re-elected General Secretary Paulina Sanchez's office, the UNS quickly reconsidered military action. They knew that the war with the Midfell would be costly and devastating, but they also knew that they wouldn't allow the Midfell to continue their aggressive expansion. As the two sides prepared for war, it became clear that this could be no ordinary conflict. The Midfell were far more technologically advanced than humanity, and it seemed that they had the upper hand. Admiral Yasmin Herbert, a seasoned veteran of the IDF, now called the UNS Navy, was called upon to lead a task force to the southern border to protect humanity's interests. She knew that the stakes were high and that any mistake could be the UNS Navy's last. As the task force arrived at the border, they were met with a formidable force of Midfell warships. The UNS government desperately tried to find a diplomatic solution to the crisis, but the Midfell seemed unwilling to listen. They saw humanity as inferior and it seemed determined to push them out. Several star systems immediately fell on the Midfell advance. UNS Admiral Jose Perez together with Admiral Yasmin Herbert were both defeated in the Battle of Akmal system on August 20th, 2224. The early months of the war were unfavorable for humanity. As the war raged on, it became clear that humanity was outmatched. The Midfell's advanced technology and superior numbers gave them an advantage that the UNS couldn't overcome. The UNS government had to face the fact that the war might be a stalemate or a defeat and the loss of Akmal system was a clear indication that the war was not in their favor. As the war dragged on, the UNS government began to consider desperate measures dedicating 90% of its economy on the war effort, producing ships at an unprecedented rate to turn the tide of the war on humanity's favor. On January 16, 2227, the UNS launched a counterattack led by Admiral Yasmin Herbert and was able to turn the tide of the war at the Battle of Rosalga system on March 5, 2227. The UNS had been outmatched and outgunned for years, but with their new strategy and their increased production of ships and weapons, they were able to push back the enemy and reclaim their lost territory. This counterattack led by Admiral Herbert and her fleet was a turning point in the war. The Midfell were caught off guard and were forced to retreat after a series of devastating naval defeats. The UNS was able to take advantage of this momentum and launch an invasion of Midfell territory, pushing the enemy further and further back. The war, which had lasted for over a decade, finally came to an end on April 25, 2234, when the Midfell sued for peace. The UNS, exhausted and battle-worn, accepted the Treaty of Terms and the war officially came to a close. As the war finally came to an end, humanity emerged victorious, but at a heavy cost. The conflict had claimed the lives of countless soldiers and civilians, and the UNS was left to rebuild and recover from the devastating war. However, despite the hardships, humanity remained determined to continue exploring the galaxy and forging their own destiny. On the following years, on the aftermath of the war, the UNS made the decision to dedicate their resources to rebuilding and strengthening their military capabilities. They were determined to protect humanity's interests in the galaxy at all costs. Admiral Yasmin Herbert and Admiral Jose Perez was hailed as a hero for their leadership and their bravery during the war, and both were given the highest honor in the UNS Navy. Their names forever etch in the annals of history as leaders who saved humanity. Admiral Herbert was also appointed to lead the military's modernization efforts, working to develop new technologies and strategies to ensure that humanity would never be again caught off guard. In the years that followed, the UNS continued to grow and prosper, establishing colonies and trading partners throughout the galaxy. They were respected and feared by other alien civilizations, and they worked tirelessly to maintain their dominance in the galaxy. And while they knew that there would always be challenges ahead, they were ready to face them head-on, with determination and strength.